It's kind of sad that both Dracula-centric movies that have come out this year, uh, both bombed. Like, it, I mean, at least for this one, it looks like it's gonna bomb, because it's not really making that much money, and Renfield really did bomb, and that made me sad. But either way, I went to go see The Last Voyage of the Demeter, or as I like to call it, Dracula on a Boat. I've always liked vampire movies. I feel like we're gonna be in a big swing of vampire movies, at least recently. Mainly because of just, they're coming back into the zeitgeist a little bit. We're having, mainly the big one that's on my radar is, uh, 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 uh what's his name? Robert Eggers' uh, Nosferatu movie, which has been, like, a, like, a little bit in the works for a while. Apparently it's coming out soon. It's done filming, so I guess that's, like, for me, it's like, oh, it's coming out soon. But even then, Robert Eggers and Nosferatu are like a match made in heaven. I'm very excited about that. There's even Chloe Zhao's Dracula movie that's like kind of a western? I, I have no idea if there's movement on that, but that sounds like a really cool idea to me. And now with this, we, The Last Voyage of the Demeter, what we what this movie is, apparently this has been in the works for like 20 years, they took one chapter out of the original novel, like Dracula, and just like made, made an entire movie out of one chapter, which is him on the boat going to London. You, you made a movie, you made an entire two hour movie out of one chapter in a book. Honestly, that's pretty impressive. And I bet you if you thought about that for a little bit, you could see the big concern there. Two hour movie based on one chapter in a book. Yes, this movie is too long. <laughs> there were a couple times where I was looking at my phone and I checked the time and went, Oh my god, we have a half hour left in this? I thought it was going to be done. <laughs> so, that that is actually by far my biggest like com complaint about it. Like, honestly, it weighs down the movie quite a bit, <laughs> in my opinion. So let's get on to what I did like then. I think the thing I liked the most is that, that a lot of the sets were all practical. They were actually built. Of course, they weren't actually at sea. But the boat, like the, the Demeter, was real. And, like, whenever you see them on a boat, they're actually on a boat. I, I, I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff. It's nice to see Corey Hawkins in a big lead role. I've always liked him as an actor, and he gets a lot to chew on in this movie, and I really liked him in this. He, he might be my favorite part of this movie, maybe outside of, like, the construction of the boat. We have a pretty nice ensemble cast. A lot of them I didn't recognize as well, but also Liam Cunningham, who's in Game of Thrones, is in this as the captain. Uh, I have to figure out the name, the pronunciation of this name. Aisling Franciosi? I don't know how to spell that. Her name's gonna be in the cast in the description. She was pretty good in this too. David Dastmalchian. Again, gotta figure out the pronunciation. I think that's how you say it though. He's pretty great in this too. Uh, Stefan Kapisic is also in this. I didn't know, I didn't know he was in this until I saw the credits. But he plays Colossus in the Deadpool movie. And also Dracula himself, played by creature king Javier Botet. If you've seen, like, a lot of modern horror movies, he's usually one of the guys that, like, plays the creature in that. Like, I'm pretty sure he plays, like, the crooked man in The Conjuring 2 or something. Like, like, uh, like he always plays these kind of roles. And for Dracula, basically... He looks creepy as hell in this, and I loved it. I also think the overall aesthetic and just, like, visuals of this are just really grimy and dark and eerie. And for that kind, for this kind of story, you gotta nail something like that, and I really think that the director did it. Speaking of the director, this director is actually Andre Overdahl. It's a, it's a Norwegian name, I'm pretty sure I mispronounced it, but... Here we go. He did a hell of a good job directing this, and even then, after I came back and I just like found something to watch that night, I didn't even realize I watched another one of his movies after that, The Autopsy of Jane Doe, which was also really good. And he also made the Scary Stories to Tell Them Dark movie from like a couple years ago, and that was also pretty good. So, at least for this, out of the three, I think Last Voyage of the Demeter is the weakest one but still not bad by any means. Overall, I think The Last Voyage of the Demeter is a perfectly fine movie. I don't really know how well this has been like reviewing with critics or not. Honestly, I really don't care. But if you're a fan of horror, maybe you'll like this more than me. I guess I, I thought this was okay at best, mainly because of just how long it was. 
But if you're into this kind of movie, like if you're into like Dracula-centric stuff and vampires, I, I think this would be right up your alley. And that's why I'm going to go with a 6 out of 10 for Dracula on a boat. Just... It, they should have just called it Dracula on a boat. Do you know how funny that would have been? Alright, if you have seen The Last Voyage of the Demeter, what did you think about it? Did you like, like, how Dracula looked? Because that was, like, one of the more, I guess, modern designs of Dracula, at least in a unique sense, and I really enjoyed that. So, let me know what you think of The Last Voyage of the Demeter uh, in the comments below. Like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video. See ya!